Okay, what I want to talk about here is what I call basics of options or my 101 for options. So this is Bruce with Targeted Wealth Creation. And the purpose of this course is to give anyone who has some ideas about options a little more information with some of the name, the vernacular, strategies you can put on. Although I'm going to keep this at a basic and a little bit intermediate, and I'll go in and do an advanced class. So for that purposes, let's go through this. Um, and understand what we're going to be doing and I'll give you as much detail as I can. <clears throat> so under basics of options, what are the types of options? What are the components? Basically what we call the building block blocks of options. What are the types of contracts that someone can utilize in options? What are the risk of options? There's inherently some risk in options. But we need to understand that when we put on different kinds of option strategies. Basic strategies within options. If I'm bullish, if I'm bearish, if I'm cautious, if I want to capture small gains one way or the other or no gain while the stock stays flat, there are strategies that we can do. Um, when to buy and when to sell an option. Yes, you can sell options. And the last thing I may not even cover in this is the Greeks around options. There's theta, there's a whole big, there's gamma, which really describe the things that are decaying or expanding and what they're made up of. But I may not cover that. I may just stop prior to that and I'll cover that in my um, intermediate to advanced. Okay. So we talk about derivatives. Derivatives are similar to options in that they're a contract between two or more parties whose value is based on an agreed upon underlying financial asset. Index or security. Common underlying instruments include bonds, commodities, currencies, interest rates, market indexes, and stocks, and ETFs for that matter. So um, let's move through and define an option, okay? An option is a contract which gives the buyer, the owner or holder of the option, the right but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset or instruments at a specified date depending on the form of the option, okay? So what and how do I utilize options? What are the usage of options? Well, some of you that are going to be following my channel, and I've done one video on Coney and Misty, which are two of my favorite Yield Max family of funds. So they employ sophisticated option strategies which are typically called synthetic long stock and that'll get covered a little bit but by this by the time this class is done for the basic 101 of options you'll understand most options and then I'll get into those strategies also in the high yielding yield max and there are some other family of funds Besides the synthetic long stop calls, they certainly deploy what we call naked call or short call options. They sell a call without owning the underlying stock. So they're forced to buy it back at a loss if it doesn't expire worthless or buy it back at a lesser value than what they sold it for. So you'll start to understand how those can come about by going through the basics of, of options. Let me pause here for a minute. Okay, so moving on, um, I wanted to cover the ideas behind um, what all you can do with options. I, I gave an example of the long uh, call 
the selling short, naked option, call options. So, but in general, you can hedge your bet. You have a large portfolio, you own a bunch of tech stocks, you own S&P 500 companies, and you feel like the market's gonna go down. Well, one of the things you could do, it's like cheap insurance. You go out and buy some puts. Purchasing puts as you believe something is going down and you will profit if it goes down. So if you owned Amazon or Nvidia or Apple or something and you felt like that was a large holding, then you could buy that particular stock and buy puts on it. If you had a wide variety or owned index funds or something, then you could buy puts on the index fund, right? So you can buy very specific puts or puts in a broad category that reflect what's in your portfolio. Okay, and we'd call that hedging. Arbitrage is when uh, it, these synthetic calls are a perfect example of what Yieldmax is doing. They'll get a common strike price. Let's say you got Kony, which is a ETF around Coinbase in the Bitcoin or uh, environment currently. So, Coin reflects what Kony is doing if the calls and the, and the call strategies are done correctly. So that might, playing an arbitrage there, and then just simply um, making money, which is exactly what these high yield funds do. They want to deploy f a few different option strategies. All right, so let's get into the options themselves and talk about that. So let me, what are the components? Okay, well, you start with a call, a call types of options. So you basically have two types of options. You have a call or you have a put. Well, I can utilize those differently. If I buy a call, okay, and I don't own the underlying stock, which wouldn't be relevant because uh, you don't have to to buy a call, you're only at risk your premium, and that's a bullish bet. So you're buying a call on a stock, on an index, on a commodity, whatever you're buying it on, and uh, you make that decision based on a, a set of circumstances. A put typically is bearish, but both calls and puts can be bought. So if you buy a put, that's bearish. If you buy a call, that's uh, bullish but you can turn and sell those. If I sell a put, I can turn that into being bullish. I could a, sell a call with a bearish strategy in mind, and I'll give you a few examples as we move through that. Okay, so that's the basic thing about a call and a put. Depends on how I utilize them, whether they're bullish or bearish. What are the components inside an option? Is it like, Greek language when you start hearing people talk about strike prices and time decay and gamma and theta. And let, let's leave the Greek part out, but let's call them what they are, time delay and op option premium. So a strike price is pretty straightforward. If Amazon is trading at $100 and we're really bullish on Amazon, we feel in the next month or so at their next quarterly call, they're gonna announce a new product, a new car, a new something, and their earnings are gonna be terrific, okay? So the way I could take advantage of that, I have to have a lot of capital to be going out and buying a $100 stock. If I buy a 1,000 shares, that's $100,000. Wouldn't that be smarter just to buy some options? Yes, generally speaking, it would be. I can show you where there's risk associated with that and what they are. But let's say that, that, that Amazon is $100. You feel like it's going to go to 110 or 120 in the next 30 to 45 days. You could go out and buy a $100 call. Okay. The premium on something like Amazon, it's not that volatile, likely over 60 days, 90 days, it's probably a few dollars because you're already buying at the money, right? You're already buying at the same call that the current strike price is at. We call that at the money. 
it's not below and it's not above. It's not in the money and it's not out of the money. It's at the money. Okay. So I'm only dealing with time premium. So let's say that time premium for 60 days is $3 on a $100 stock. So the stock needs to be 103 in 60 days for me to just break even on my call because I paid $3 for it. So I'm paying for that time. If they announce a new product and the stock runs to 120, then I'm going to make the difference between $20 and $3 that I paid for the, uh, for the call option. The stock would be 120. I paid $3. I sell the option for 20 and I paid three. So I collect a $17 profit. So $17 on a $3 investment is pretty good return. And the fact that I, I did it in 60 or less days. Now, what's at risk? Well, your money's at risk. You know, how many contracts did you buy? Did you buy 10 contracts? Okay. If you did, then you spent $3,000, $3, okay, times 1,000. So you spent uh, $3,000 in order to control a thousand shares for 60 days, right? Knowing that anything above 103 is yours to keep. All right, at a thousand shares worth. So those are the kinds of things. So that premium is broken into time value and intrinsic value, okay? Because I gave you an example where it only had time value. You bought a hundred dollar stock at Am strike price at Amazon three months out and you paid three dollars for it because it's already a hundred. It's perfectly a hundred. You bought a hundred dollar strike. You need to be at 103 to break even. And the time decay happens as you get closer. Let's say they make an announcement on a new product before earnings and it's three weeks after you bought the option. You still got five more weeks, right? You bought it two months out, eight weeks, three weeks go by, Amazon announces this great new service or product, the stock goes up $20, so it's at 120 and you bought the 100 strike, so you got a $20 gain, plus you got some time premium left, right? It was three for the full two months, maybe you've got $1.70 or $1.80. So you could sell it for $20 and, you know, 2180 or something if it happened immediately. So there's small things and then minus any commissions. Typically 10 contracts on things are $6, $8 and you got to buy and you got to sell the premiums or sorry, the commissions on options are pretty cheap nowadays at most discount brokers. Okay. So that, that helps you understand the option premium, the strike price is, is the price of the instrument, the, the call or put value. Okay, so what types of contracts? I mentioned this briefly, at the money, in the money, and out of the money. So let's take a, 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 a look at that. So the type of option contract, you really have calls and you have puts. So if I'm buying a call option in the money, means that the spot price is greater than my strike price. So let's take that example of Amazon at $100. Say I want to buy a 99 if they have it. Some of these options are only in $5 increments when you get bigger. Sometimes they have dollar increments, depends on the price of the stock, the option exchange, etc. So, an in the money for sure might be a $95 call and the stock's trading at 98 because they don't typically have dollar increments when you get up near 100. So, when it's 98, you have to buy a 100 call, which would be, you know, um, in the money. But if it's trading at 98 and you bought a 95, that's in the money as well. So, it, you know, whenever the strike price is our spot price is greater, it's in the money, okay? Or at the money if it's the same, or out of the money, right? The spot, spot price is less than the strike price. And when and why would you do that? Let me give you an example. 
let's take that Amazon example. Let's say they're coming out with some new service or product. You've been reading and hearing about it. It's supposed to be announced in April. It's February now. You go out three months, give it an extra month, and you go, this stock's going to go up 30%. It's probably going to go up from 100 to 130. So if I buy a $100 option, strike price, three months out on the call, it's all premium, I might pay $4. But if I go buy a 105 or a 110, which is out of the money, right? I'm, I'm saying I'm only gonna make money when it's above that, So, but my premium comes down. So the three or four dollars at 100 becomes maybe a dollar or a dollar 50, okay, for buying a 110. But you're so confident the stock's gonna go to 130, so you can get more options by buying it at a cheaper price. So there's a lot of different strategies one can deploy um, in strike price and in the money and out of the money. Okay, so we talked about the types of options and that. Let's move on. and cover the risk. What are our risk and options? Well, options have limited risk and unlimited profit. Eh, generally true, but in advanced course, I would tell you there's many options that you can partake in that have huge risk. Let's say that I sell a call and I don't own the underlying stock. That's considered a naked call. That's what these ETFs and Neomax do in addition to their synthetic longs. So they think that, take Coney on Coinbase, they think coin is going up, but they don't think it's going up more than you know 20% in a week. I mean, it's actually been at times going up 23% in a day. They will take that risk of selling something 20% above the current price and hoping if it runs up, it pulls back and by expiration, it expires worthless. And the premium's big because of the underlying volatility. So I'll give you an example of Amazon. Say Amazon's just been flying lately. It's going up big and it's at the $100 scenario, but you're willing to take some risk. You think that you can get four or five dollars for 30 days in, a in Amazon by going out 30 days and selling a call 20% higher. So 20% would be the 120s and you can get four or five dollars only going out 30 days. So you're saying, well, I'm willing to do that. Well, if Amazon runs to 140, you gotta buy that call back so that you don't have to buy all the stock, which is even more money. So you have to buy all those calls for every call you sold for $5. You know, it's above <laughs> the strike price. You're gonna have to spend a lot of money. And that happens in some of these ETFs that are trying to generate. They get a few losers, they get more winners, and then their synthetics end up paying them good money. Okay. So that helps you understand that. Let's get down to a specific example. Uh, here's one. So let's take call option buying. It's probably the simplest. <clears throat> let's take this example and we'll call this stock XYZ, right? So I got a stock trading at $14 XYZ. I've got a friend, he's been working there a long time. I've got some other friends. I had a summer job there. This is the right niche. They're doing really well. They're making a lot of money as a company. I feel like it's gonna continue on the gravy train. And I wanna buy some more shares of the stock because I think the stock's going up. Well, somebody said, hey, did you know they have options now? For the last four months, they have options. So let's take the scenario of saying, I think the, pop, the stock's gonna pop three or $4 in the next earnings call. So it's at 14 right now, 60 days for sure, they're gonna have their earnings or sooner. So I go out three months 
and I have a choice of buying a thousand shares. That's what I want to maximize my gain. I want to make about three thousand dollars on this stock going up. So if I want to own a thousand shares, I got to spend fourteen dollars times a thousand. I got to spend fourteen thousand in capital to buy the stock. I could buy it on margin, but now I'm adding even more risk, right? Okay, and that assumes I have enough assets in there that, that allow the margin to take place. But if I want to go out and buy a call and go out and I buy the 14 strike because that's where the price is at. So it's an at the money. I only have time premium. I want three months. So let's say it's 80 cents. So I've got to go out and control a thousand shares. That's 10 contracts. Each contract controls 100 shares. So I got a thousand times 80 cents. I got $800 to put this option play on, okay? So that's a lot better than 14,000. Now, where do I win, where do I lose? Well, in this scenario, if they do the announcement, the stock jumps up to $17, a $3 gain like you thought. It could be plus or minus a dollar or 50 cents or something. But let's take the scenario where it goes up $3. So you paid 80 cents, and, and so at 14.80, you're break even. You needed an 80 cent gain in the stock, right? Now, if it happened in the first month out of three months, you've got some time premium left, right? But if it took the majority of the time, you don't have any real value of time premium because of time uh, decay. So let's say you got 20 cents, it came about three weeks before your option was going to expire. The stock jumped to $17, so you sell the option, okay, for, you paid 80 cents, you sell the option for $3.20, and you paid 80, okay? So now you've got, you've got a $3.20 gain. Well, that's a $3.20 gain on an 80 cent spend, right? So you've got 400, you've got four times what you invested. You invested 80, 800 and you got back 3,200, right? You got back 3,000 because the stock went up $3 and then you got 20 cents back in premium, time premium left for the option to expire. So that's the scenario. So I wanted you to have this basis of information on understanding. There's a lot more to it. And, and hopefully in the comments section, you guys can do something. But I, I labeled a few more things. So what are option strategies? Well, I can go long a call. I can short a call if I'm bearish, right? I can buy a call and go long. I can write a covered call. I own the underlying asset, but I want to collect some more premium. My only risk is they maybe take my stock away, but they take it away generally at a higher strike price I wrote it at, and I get to keep the premium. So it can be a good scenario. You can buy it back if you don't want the stock to get taken out. You just buy back the delta and the option premium. Okay. So I got long puts, short puts. Again, whether I sell or buy is whether I'm bullish or bearish on a call or a put. So this last scenario, I tried to graph it out a little bit. Let's take our $14 stock and let's say that I want to buy it at the money. I want to buy a 14 strike. Now, maybe they don't have a 14 strike. Maybe I am forced to buy a 15 strike. Well, in that case, it's going to be cheaper, right? Because I'm buying 15. It doesn't start gaining money till it gets over 15. So I need the stock to be 16 and it has a dollar value. But when it's at 14 and three months expiration, I'm probably paying 20 or 25 cents on that premium instead of the dollar that I'm going to pay on 14. So that's why sometimes when people are sure about the explosion of a stock, they can buy further out of the money, right? So all that's at risk is the premium regardless, right? So whatever premium you pay and spend in your option bet when you buy a call, that's what's at risk. 
Now there's some other strategies and deploying of options where you can lose more. Okay, so I think that kind of covers it. I gave the months down here, time, price on the left side. It jumps $2 for every line on the chart. So you guys get it. Uh, hope you like it. Let me know what you want to know more about in the comments. And uh, I look forward uh, to communicating with you guys. Thanks again. Bye for now.